All right, we're going to look some more at this example that we looked at previously. Um, so we had a vector valued function and I plugged in a couple of t values, three different t values here. We got out some output vectors and we plotted those output vectors. What we want to talk about in this video is what is called a space curve that is associated with or generated by this vector valued function. So we talked some in a prior video about how graphing vector valued functions is going to have to be a little bit different from graphing ordinary y equals f of x functions because I don't have an axis or a place to indicate my input variable. I could label on a few of these vectors here. Uh, this one's r of 0, this one's r of 1, and this one's r of negative 1. I could label those, but really if I want to graph this vector valued function, I really have infinitely many vectors to graph, and so I can't label all those, and I really can't draw all of those. So when we think about graphs of vector valued functions, essentially what we do is sort of strip away some of the extra information here so that we can focus on just a part of what we're looking at here. And one thing that you should notice is that uh, I drew all of these vectors with their tails at the origin, and when I do that, there are some points at the terminal point of each of those vectors. And essentially what we're going to look at is just graphing those terminal points of all of those vectors. Um, so when we think about a vector valued function, if we graph the vectors all with their tail at the origin, and we graph uh, just the terminal points of those vectors, we call that a space curve. We might call it a plane curve if we're in R2, but since we're in R3, we call it a space curve. We would call that a space curve generated by or associated with this vector valued function. And so what that space curve is, is really just a set of points, so ordered triples. Those ordered triples, though, are at the terminal points of those vectors, all drawn with their tail at the origin. And if you remember when I plotted these vectors, really what I did was I started at the origin and then I plotted the point 0, 0, 4, and the terminal point here would be 3, negative 2, 4, and the terminal point here is 3, 2, 4. So this notation indicates vectors, but I've also got terminal points that have the same numbers as the coordinates of that terminal point uh, of these vectors here. So space curve generated by R of t, would be the set of all points, and they're the terminal points of these vectors. But notice that the uh, x coordinate of the point comes from the i component of the vector, which would come from this f of t function here. And then the g of t, the second component function, generates the j component of the vector, or the y coordinate of the point. And then this last one, in this case 4, would uh, generate the z-coordinates of the points. So it might not seem like a big deal to distinguish between a vector and a point. And they do have this intimate relationship where if you're, if you're drawing these vectors with their tail at the origin, the terminal point of the vector uh, is the same. Uh, no, numerically as the uh, components of the vector, but it is important that you distinguish between those things here. So uh, space curve generated by R of t is all of these points that are the terminal points of all of the vectors of R of t, outputs of R of t. And so that's what we're actually going to graph here. And so a computer is really good at plotting a lot of points. You can use a computer to generate these space curves. Uh, we're going to do some by hand, and then we'll also look at some on a computer. This one is simple enough that it's not too hard to do by hand, so I'm going to do this one by hand, and maybe one other one by hand, and then we'll look at some more complicated ones on a computer. Part of why this one is simple is because this third uh, component of that vector or the z coordinate of our points is always going to be 4. So if I think about this, instead of components of a vector as coordinates of points, then maybe I write x equals for the x coordinate of the point 3t squared and y equals for the y coordinate negative 2t 
and z equals 4. And when you look at this, you should say, oh, that looks like parametric equations. We did parametric equations of lines in R3 in the last chapter, and so what this generates really is parametric equations for this space curve. And sometimes we denote that space curve as C, an uppercase C, space curve C that's generated by this vector valued function. So these equations generate uh, the space curve. I've got three points here. You can see when you look at these equations that between the x and y, you might be able to recognize that you could eliminate the parameter for the x and y, and you'll get the equation of a parabola. If I eliminate the parameter, maybe I want to solve the y equation for t. So I'll have t equals y over negative 2 and substitute into that first equation then I'll get x equals 3 times y over negative 2, the quantity squared, or x equals 3 fourths y squared. You should recognize that as the equation of a parabola. It's a parabola that opens on the x-axis. Uh, so this describes the geometry, that it really is a parabola that's going to connect these points that I have here. And then all of my points for this one will just be up at a height of 4. So for this one, I can use some points that I've plotted coming from these vectors. I can also use this idea of eliminating the parameter to recognize the geometry that's going on here, using what I know about algebra to recognize that geometry, and then plotting that space curve up here. So these are three points, and if I graph this parabola, x equals 3 fourths y squared up here at a height of 4, uh, we get a parabola that opens sort of like that on the positive x-axis up in a plane at z equals 4. Uh, anytime you graph a parametric equation, set of parametric equations, you should remember that that set of parametric equations has an orientation associated with it uh, in the direction that t, uh, when t increases, the direction you would move along that curve. You could use these points here and think about as t increases from 0 to 1, where does this move along that curve? You can also use these equations and think about what happens. I might choose to focus in on the second equation, uh, y equals negative 2t. So that tells me that when t increases, y decreases because of the negative 2 here. When t gets bigger, y gets smaller. When t increases, y decreases. So that tells me that on my space curve here, when t increases, that would be the direction of orientation, y decreases. So we're going in the direction of decreasing y, which would be from right to left along this parabola. So I'm going to indicate that orientation along that parametric curve with arrows, just like you do with parametric curves in two dimensions. All right, so this space curve is really just this parabola. If I really wanted to just graph the space curve, perhaps I wouldn't show these vectors on here. I would just have this space curve up here. Depending on how perfect you want your graph to be, maybe you do some labels, you plot some points, show where that's at at t equals 0, t equals 1, for example. But this curve here is often what we'll actually look at, so kind of stripping away the idea of looking at the vectors. Remember that the vectors are always there and part of the problem and part of what you want to think about with this vector valued function. We're just kind of stripping it away so that we can look at a simpler graph when we think about these space curves. We'll look at another example in the next video, and then we'll look at some on the computer that are a little bit more interesting and really too complicated to draw by hand.